celebrate Jesus in this house. Let's appreciate him. Father, we give you praise. 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 Wow, wow. Can you? Is that all you can do for the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, sister, fulfillment. So much on fire this evening. Can you celebrate God in our life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Let's have a seat in God's presence. Father, we thank you for the first Thursday in 2024. We we'll thank you, Lord, for your plans for us. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in our life this very year. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty move in our midst. Thank you, Lord, for impact. Thank you for light in this place. Thank you for speed. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for empowerment. Thank you for your backing. Thank you for your wisdom that is at work in us. Lord, we exalt you. We exalt you. Thank you, Lord, for showing us the way. Thank you, Lord, for communicating your mind to us. And Lord, thank you for pouring your oil upon us. Thank you for setting us in motion. We glorify you, Jesus. Be exalted, O oh God. Lord, this evening we ask that you will communicate once again your will to us we will not be short sighted in your light we gain more light by light we are we rise into more light in the name of Jesus we will not be blind we see with clarity in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus precious name we have prayed Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is so much that is supply of light and the auction or the anointing can do to a man. I mean, that was where we, we stopped uh, the last time we met the cross of the night. Emphasis was on dipping your head in the hall and of course because of time I didn't really have much time to uh, also dig into that I want to start from there and then by, by Sunday by the grace of God we are going to be smashing the teaching series for this month so this very evening I, I want you to take this season or this teaching to be a very sensitive one that will help you at the dipping of one's head in the oil there is an unusual propelling from within that makes a man feel I need to get everything done now you know there is this kind of push that comes with that I made mention of something during that crossover night that the anointing that the oil is a lubricant it sets you in a proper state for effective delivery and so by virtue of that lubrication you are open to get things done with ease so what looks so difficult difficult for others what looks so hard for others so hard work becomes pleasurable work when they oil when a man is oily hard works becomes pleasurable work and this is the realm we must enter into to really enjoy 10 years ahead because if there is no sufficient lubrication or sufficient lubricant to lubricate us you know there can be so much friction that what you see to be the, the prophetic word 
that has to be, you know to do with you doing or delivering in a year what would take 10 years for others to do can kill you that's the truth because you will start doing something that is actually more than you and if it is more than you you can break down and then as a result of that breakdown you might not be able to continue you might get to a point of you like eh? uh, it's okay <laughs> I ate <laughs> just leave me alone but if you are holy you will be joyful as you smash your goals if you are oily you will be what you will smash your goals with joyfulness that is it so the oil is beautiful. The anointing is great. But the level with which this thing can prepare you to get things done. Now listen to me. Without the oil, you can drag. You can, you can, you can, in a way, find it difficult to move forward. But if there is oil, now there is too much of energy. To, to want to get everything done at once. I said, that's another temptation. That is another evil that is befalling some people at the early time of this year. And what is the evil? So they look up and down and see people, you know, pushing this one out, pushing that one out, and then you see your friend. This is your friend just started a course. He just started selling course now online. This is your friend started this. This one started three days marathon. That one went into 21 days fasting. And then because of that, there is something in you. And then by virtue of the oil upon you, something wants to like. I must devote all these goals, all these prophecy must come to pass today this week and then from being oily you are you are tending towards frustration and discouragement now because your brain is running faster than your leg <laughs> your mind is joining faster than your legs because once the oil comes it's not coming to, to grease or to rub your leg is coming to lubricate your mind and make you conceive properly what God wants to do. Not only that, it will make you in a way to embrace what God wants to do at the soulish level. So because the soul can be so hot and be hot and then the soul wants to trap everything at once and I want to get everything done today. So the leg cannot carry you again now you oh come on let me explain better it's like entering into a region and then you suddenly saw you suddenly collided with group of arm robbers god forbid and then they are chasing people and you enter into that region what will happen you will run more than your leg can carry you you know that kind of that's why people that kind of running make people fall Come on, are we together here? Yeah. You will, uh, you will flee. <laughs> so, you, as you are as you are running, you are jumping. And most of the time, one thing is sure that you may likely fall down two or three times. As you are falling down, you are picking up yourself again. You want to quickly run. You want to run for your life. Why? Because what you saw triggers something in you that this is death. Whatever I can do, I must do it to get out of this environment. So, in a way, the, it is called reflex action. Reflex action in, in, um, in science is an automatic action carried, carried out by the body. And then it is towards preventing the body from being harmed. So, this automatic action is propelled by nothing by but the fear of what, what was to happen. So, if you are if you are in a way in that particular position i'm telling you you will run beyond your leg can do so and the aftermath of that is that you break down if you don't fall down and then the people you are afraid of <laughs> are now <laughs> behind you and they say oh yeah salo, I, salo. and then you are just you are you are gasping for life 
you know the same thing the same thing is a possibility when a man is very holy when a man is full of so much vision and body to deliver and make something happen in a new year so everybody is practically under prayer people like that are under prayer so they feel like oh the first day has gone and you know what oh another another sign of that is that you can sit down in three days and you are not doing anything how your mind is boiling keeps you down now you are expected if indeed your mind is boiling you should run are we together here but then because of the way the mind is boiling you don't even know where to start you see that <laughs> because what the mind is saying is that do everything do everything act now act now and then if you look around the prayer of the environmental activity can also in a way collides with your own you know internal prayer that is a product of the rubbing of the oil so because the rubbing of the oil here is coming to uh, to bring the divine dimension into your running into your journey so that divine dimension has a way of of uh, making you not comfortable with where you are so because of the desire to quickly check out check out of that environment you might you might sit down on the same spot at the end of the day, I don't even know what to do. You are just like, okay, now. <laughs> and then you stay there. The first day, the second day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, and then you are like, what have I even done? Now, listen to me. If you are not careful, this can also degenerate to anger. You get so angry with yourself. Because if your heart is burning and your legs are not running, I'm telling you, you might look at yourself at the mirror and say, So, what do you better And you have started, you know, and because of that, self judgment, self criticism step in. And as that takes place, there is great, I mean, a serious issue, serious problem going on. So, what am I trying to say here? That the anointing you have received, the oil, the auction you have received, is not for your destruction. It's actually to help you. But one thing you must know is that this oil is not just there for performance in terms of action. The oil is also there to teach you to know. I think my mama quoted that scripture. First John, what? 227. Can we read it? Hmm. Hallelujah. You are God most high. You are Jesus Christ. You are Hallelujah. 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 God most high. God most high. Jesus, Jesus Christ, you are, you are Israel. Uh, all right, can we can we have that place? First John chapter two, verse twenty-seven. Who is reading for us, loud and clear? For the anointing which ye have received of him abided, of him abided in you. You need not that any man teach you. For the same anointing teaches you of all things. And is truth. And is no lie. As it has taught you, ye shall abide in it. So, please have your seat, man. You should not be under prayer to her. Though the anointing is a propeller. So the anointing want to set you in motion. But you must understand that the same anointing teaches you all things. So beyond just acting 
and pressing forward you must trust God for the dimension of, of tutoring dimension of learning and impartation of knowledge that comes with the anointing so the anointing does not just set you in motion the anointing makes you know Hallelujah. So part of what the anointing will help you to do in the knowing realm or the knowing dimension of it is that the anointing will help you to understand that though you need to fulfill all of this at once but you are expected to break it into smaller, smaller, smaller tasks that you can consume at once. Yeah, you know what? A soul level, a soulish level, that might not be the desire of your heart. Why? Because the soul is craving for immediate result. So because of the craving of the soul for immediate result, it is very possible for you not to be able to judge well and, and look at things well as soulish realm. So at this time, you need to actually journey beyond the soulish realm and tap into the wisdom that is locked up in the anointing which you have received of thee. Are you getting my point? So you need to tap into that. So by tapping into that auction, to that anointing, you just know what to do now and what to do later. Hmm, are we together? So when Jesus came, on, I mean when God came about in Genesis chapter 1, we saw what happened how the darkness was upon the face of the deep and then the spirit of the lord over us on the face of the water and the scripture says and god said let there be light don't forget that where god was going majorly was to recreate because what he made in the beginning the bible says in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void as verse 2 and darkness was upon the face of the deep so agree with me that the moving of the spirit is a provoker of the creative dimension of God hmm. so the spirit of God is a is a creative spirit is a spirit of creativity once it comes once it comes once you receive that kind of anointing you see the anointing that that scripture says in first john that the scripture talks about is actually the spirit I, I told you several times that the anointing of god is not the goya oil are we together yeah so if god want to anoint a man he gives him spirit without mayor he gives him the fullness of his spirit then you are full of god and then the oil of god you can perceive it on your head so the moving of the spirit in spite the pre, the the prevailing situation exists for one thing and what the moving of the spirit existed for in genesis chapter one was to actually provoke the creative dimension of god so when God came on board, he could have just opened his mouth and said, all oh, that I created in the beginning, both heaven and earth appear in one day, but it was not so. The spirit, <sighs> so he came and it was not everything should appear. He knew what should appear first. Let there be light. And there is a wisdom around that. No matter how pressurized you are to make things happen and to do certain things now, I will beg you, I will beg you that before your actions, seek knowledge, seek light. You might, oh, you want to tell me God did not know that he want to create firmament. You want to tell me he did not know that he will call forth aquatic animals. You want, you want to tell me that he did not know that after that time he's going to call for the moon and the sun you want to tell me that he did not know that he was going to create man why didn't he start with a man with the creation of man and say man comfort and then it was the first thing he attended to was light now that is telling you that the anointing we should receive teaches you 
all things. Light means knowledge. Hmm. Light represents knowing. Access to revelation. Or light also means revelation. Light also means openness. Nothing is hidden. So the, the, the calling forth of light was a strategic act. So the spirit was moving and I call that spirit the creative spirit of God or the spirit of creativity. I, I, are you getting my point here? Please don't be distracted. I call that spirit what? The spirit of creativity. So the moving of the spirit here is a strange move. It's not an ordinary move. It is a move that happened for one reason. And what is the reason for that move? The reason for that move was the creative you know was to release the creative force so that everything that has become formless or that became formless and void will be projected out so listen to me oh because of that movement it is very possible that god be under prayer i say hey oh bank on to tell it i say as he sees the spirit move he says no i'm creating the heaven and the earth in one day and you know he's all powerful he could do that <laughs> but there is there is a pattern there is a principle to getting this done i mean there is a principle that that enhances productivity and that principle does not come with i do it one day i must do everything one day no no do you know that even thinking that you want to do everything one day looks like wisdom Come on, are we together here? Is that what you want to do in one week? You want to do it in one day? It looks like wisdom. And in, in the realm of men, that looks like that looks like deep thing. And it looks like you are powerful if you're able to get that done. But no, no, that does not in any way suggest wisdom as far as God is concerned. So he is God. He was not limited in power. He was not li limited in understanding. He was not limited in the resources needed to make the heaven and the earth in one day. But the opening of the spirit, I told you, represents one thing, which is creativity. He should just embrace that passion, that body, and then call forth everything. But he didn't do so. The first thing he did was that, oh, let the, uh, the light. And then it was recorded that on the first day, he, he, he. Oh, that was all he did that day come on are we together here on the first day he, he called for the light that was what he did now look at me if you call for the light and then you see listen to me mm. that spirit that spirit of creation functions better when you tap into the light dimension he said the spirit is shed you all things and then he, he said the spirit will not lie because everything he's going to say is what is the spirit of truth so by calling for the light it's like God tapping more into the provision of that spirit of creation but then he called for the light and God still put himself under and then um, relaxed like, so we continue the remaining one tomorrow <laughs> you want to tell me that what he was doing like did not require urgency and that is not in his interest that all the heaven and the air be settled in one day but no he, he learned I call that the principle of goal setting in the world system are, are we together here yeah in the world system in in the natural world, they call it go. So they said you should set go. So set this go. They said smaller go, and then long time go. <laughs> that was what God did there. So I know that the prayer is there. I know that the desire is there. Your heart is burning. You really want to get everything done. But I want to ask you, what have you done? See now, practically, if you check. You can discover, yeah, that indeed what you really want to do, you are not really doing it because in your heart you want to finish everything in one day. So you must learn to be like your father. 
you know indeed there is the creative dimension of the anointing but you must also know it that the anointing the same anointing t-shirt so if you don't lo plug in to the teaching dimension of the anointing the anointing can frustrate you because if you venture into creativity without insight you will still come down mm. So on the first day, he called for the light. And then he continued like that till the sixth day. Till the sixth day. God, who can say, and the heaven and the earth will appear. God. He has the capacity. He can, he can just do like this. Let the heaven and earth be, and it will be. There are things that God did not because he was a weak God. He did it to show us an example of how things work. Hmm. You, you get that? It's sinking to someone here. It's to show us an example of how things work. That don't kill yourself. I know that the spirit is moving you. You know that you so capable. Ah! 10 years ahead we are in that year already i must get everything done i said you can fall into the trap of doing nothing at the end of the day so it is that anointing that will still tell you all right this is the first thing to do now you really you will need money right okay so go and get two books uh so 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 book so so book read it and then you know that that will require that you also step down from any work and just sit down and be reading but you see there is a way the moving of the spirit that anointing can make you look at that book and as you are reading it in your heart in your soul you feel like you are wasting time <laughs> when others are already running and then if you are the type who is a you are, you are so conversant. You are a consistent dweller on social media. You are finished. Because eh, you know, whatever it is you are seeing there will be confirming what is in your soul. Your soul so is said that everybody has gone and somebody will suddenly come and say, just in one week into the year, I finished New Testament. And your mind will cut. <laughs> So you look and say, ah, what am I doing? And after two weeks, somebody will come and say, just in two weeks, two weeks to the year, I have um, I've written a book of my own. And in your heart, the mind will burn, will burn. And sometimes you can, you can just stand up in your room and say, ah, what am I doing with my life? What am I doing with my life? But that does not solve the problem. And it will not so it will only cause more problem. It will only cause more problem. <laughs> hey, but if you allow the teaching part of that anointing, it brings balance to everything. It brings balance. You are not under prayer. They are trying, you know, you are seeing everything flying up and down, but the spirit keeps teaching you, calm down, sit down, and eat. Sit down, eat. Calm down. You will hurt. Calm down. <laughs> hey, boss, sir. Hey, 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 I, 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 what I wrote in my book for this week, there are like 10 tasks. I have not done anything. Uh, yes, I know. You will do it. But do you know it? That if you give in to the teaching dimension of that anointing, it might look late. By the time you are up to do what you need to do, you can smash those things once. This, I've seen this kind of thing before. Because if you don't give in, you don't give in to the teaching dimension of the anointing. What will happen to you at the end of it? You get stuck. So what you are rushing to do, you will not get there. You are sweating. You are struggling to do it. Deep in your heart, there is a burden. There is a passion to deliver. But then the delivery is not really coming as expected. Because you are too over anxious. Anxiousness, they kill you. 
So you will, you will hear Paul says what like, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing because if you are if you are anxious, what you see at the, no anxiousness looks like you are serious to get the work done. But what you see at the end of the day is that you sit down, you don't do anything. Because with uh, come what comes with anxiousness is unnecessary weariness, and it's a product of the fact that you are worried. You are worried. You are concerned. You are too concerned. I want to implore us to be like Nehemiah. Nehemiah got the the message from his people. Let's look at Nehemiah chapter 1. Aya. Baba di deon. Baba di deon. Baba di deon. Baba di deon. Baba di Supply up to us. Yelele manata, Baba di de ho. Baba di de ho. Baba di de. Baba di de ho. And it came to pass in the month Shizmu, in the 28 years, 28 year as I was in Shushan, the palace, that Anani and one of my brethren came e and certain men of Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. And then the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gate thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down 
and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before words the God of heaven now the information that came to that man set his heart on fire that information entered into him so as soulish realm he was disturbed are we together here but the air that he received came when he sat down and he fasted for this hallelujah so when you dip your head in the hole you are almost set on your feet to keep running but when you plug in to a system of fasting or to a order of life that has to do with fasting it's like stepping down the anointing to allow the anointing to teach you before you act that is why every season of fasting and prayer is a season to see is a season to know is a season to be able to plan out your ways so no matter how how anxious you are when you go into fasting and prayer there is a kind of release that you experience so all your ambition everything is submitted at his feet so as you fast and pray you see far into the future so by virtue of your insight you are able to say oh this is the first thing to do this is the next thing i should do the second week and then even in that second week i will do this on monday i will do this on tuesday i will do this on wednesday are we together here so what he had should actually make him run to jerusalem street and say something must happen there but what he had actually pierced his heart and then the, the first response to it was to actually approach god first so the scripture says he sat down and wept the whole process of weeping as a way of also healing the soul you know sometimes not all weeping is bad there are some weeping you must engage yourself in uh, not because your family member died <laughs> do you know that this new year like this you can enter like this and then you are trying to do so many things but nothing was working you are trying to smash this goal you are trying to make this happen do you know that you can cry a good cry now in the middle of the night you are just restless that this is the first day the second day the third day the fifth day to the year into the year and i've not done anything what is wrong with me you know you cry like that to ask honest questions you are not crying because you are hopeless you are crying because you just feel you need help are we together here so the reason for the weeping of the Maya was not contingent on his hopelessness but it's actually a revealer of the fact that he knew that this thing there's nothing nothing can happen if you look at the content of his prayer you will know it that oh he did this man saw that <laughs> this thing i had is a strange one it's not something i can just do by myself then he sat down he wept sometimes it's not good to hold back your your your, your tears sometimes you need it you need it you need it it has happened to me several times that i carry the scripture and in my mind my mind is burning and then because of the burning in my mind i actually wish to consume some, some chapters and then by the time you open the first chapter you are tired already so it's like what i'm experiencing in reality physically is different from what my soul desires so sometimes i i could just close my eyes and close the bible and just stay and cry that kind of you understand that do you get my point and just stay there and just cry and just cry that Iraq in Jeba she just saw me on Lord do to it no Lord you know in Jeba he just saw me you know where that is tending to you know what that can cause you know the danger 
that can come with that so because of that knowledge you just know it that the best thing to do is to at least forget about the reading just submit to God and then after weeping for some time so just, it will just come <laughs> freshness come. that was what that guy did he sat down the Bible says he wept not for one day he had no touch in the not for one day he wept and he fasted for how many days eh for certain days so he wept he fasted he prayed he prayed and then let's look at the content of his prayer that will tell you the posture of his heart even when he was weeping or when he wept verse 5 wow and said I beseech thee O Lord God of heaven the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his covenant commandment let thy hear now be attentive and thy eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel thy servant and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against thee both I and my father's house have sinned. Now, listen to me. What, what, what does that suggest to you? I call this repentance. It wasn't just repenting. It was also repenting on behalf of his people. Do you get that? Sometimes what we need is not immediate action this new year. What we need first could be repentance. Now that repentance does not suggest that you are fornicated or you are committed adultery or you, you stole. The repentance could be, could be could mean that you are repenting from the way you lived your life. Because in 2023, there is a way, oh my God, you can live a certain time and then you can continue to reap the fruit of that in another season. There is a kind of sleep you engage yourself in in 2023 that can follow you into new year. That's why they said that a new year is not new. When you woke up on New Year Day and you stood from your bed, shots on the room. <laughs> the same way you are looking at time, 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 ticket, the same thing the same thing sometimes self, I, I used to just look and say ah, so new year what that go <laughs> it's just it's a change in the calendar year so what will make a new year new is a new shoe so the reason why you will struggle with certain things is that you are only, you only think the new year will impart it to you what you don't have before no in fact I can say categorically to you that you are the one bringing any reality you want to see into a new year so if it's, if it's if indeed it's going to be a new year then you are the one bringing that reality to the table so what you need could be repentance it could be repentance repentance from dead works repentance from you know from your way of life in 2023 and then you are honestly presenting before god that see in 2023 like this i did the same thing that led me to where i am now god help me I, i'm 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 it's as if i'm repeating history as it is then being honest with yourself you can come up light can dawn on your spirit just like Nehemiah stayed and then suddenly there was a knowing an instruction on, on the step to take so that, 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 that man appeared before the king he did not just appear as an ordinary man he did not appear as he used to appear 
and the king looked at his countenance and feel like no guy or guy Nehemiah you are not like this what happened to you why are you sad and then he explained the first ebb came and the king looked at him and said see this and this and this and this I'm going to do I'm going to support you go and meet Asaf the one who takes care of the forest so we are going to give you certain things that you will go with the king said to him before he left and he entered into the land he was not thinking of rebuilding the wall in one day they set up goals strategy some people were working in the night some were working in the day you know Nehemiah Motiripa when you run shift what is the idea of running shift is to take away stress so so that one person is not is not is not dying of, exhaust, of exhaustion and then too much of work without rest so if this person is working for so so hour another person will take it off from there and work for certain hours and then like that and i saw in nehemiah division of labor this is what we lack but we want to get work done so nehemiah did not just start the war the war project and finished it because he knew how to pray because he had auction no he finished it because he could set goals he knew what i call the division of labor it was in that nehemiah that i saw first clearly what it means to run shift because the enemies were upon them they were on them so they could not just afford to keep everybody busy so as some people are working some are there with their arrows are javelin trying to also you know they serve as God like that they continue every day and then as they were doing it there was a rec record as to okay they were able to do this area they did this area you know so you can't just wake up I want to see everything you want to do in the year come forth or appear suddenly like miracle no and do you agree with me that before Nehemiah left his master he already finished that war in his heart do you get the point that is the power of vision by vision you lay hold on the reality of a thing before you come into it but by effective setting of goals structurizing your plan by virtue of effective planning and organization you can see your vision come to reality but a man can be too anxious a man can be too carried away by the substitution or the the bogus the bogusness of the vision and not and sit down and not do anything because the art is questioning a lot of things how can this thing be where am i going to start from but the anointing which you have received is not just for performance the anointing which you have received is to know so you just know the step to take at a time and then you are not you are not limited in any way not only that you can have a wonderful plan but if you don't master the act of getting a thing done little by little there will be a problem because there is also a limit to which your human strength can carry you as per tackling and you know subduing your daily task so this comes to self-understanding self-knowledge so you that what you're coming with to the new year 2024 what you are coming with to the new year is the way you used to you know sleep anyhow what you are coming with is is um just reading one one chapter of the bible every day and then you now step into 2024 because of the vision you have captured or what you have seen that the lord said he want to do with your life and then suddenly you like oh i want to be reading 50 50 chapters every day you won't finish yourself because it will tell on you nothing see it is not about what you are able to do at once in a day but it is about what you are able to do every day consistently it can be small small 
So your power at this time is not in the magnitude of work you are able to do. Your power at this level is in how consistent you are with the little, little things you are doing. Now, does that mean that if you are reading one chapter last year, that you should still keep reading one chapter? No, you can challenge yourself. But you must be realistic. Don't challenge yourself to go and be doing 50 chapters. If all you struggled with last year was one chapter, why not start with at least two or three chapters now? At least check it out. Start it. Work on it and continue on that, you know, consistently. Go on that consistently. And if you are able to do that, there is a way you can come into more light. And something is telling you, guy, you can do 10 chapters every day. And then you are there, getting it done. What is the whole, what is the major goal? What is your vision that you want to finish the Bible? And it will come to pass. Because there is a way the consciousness of, oh, I must finish my Bible. I must finish my Bible today. I must finish my Bible today. Or <laughs> this year, I must finish it. There is a way the consciousness can keep you from not even reading anything. <laughs> for, for the mindset that you sustain, that you want to finish a thing. That same mindset can be your greatest selling. Though it's a beautiful mindset. I want to finish so, so, so. It's a beautiful one. But please, wisdom is required. And what is the wisdom? The wisdom is seen in setting goals. The wisdom is seen. You know, for instance now, what I said about uh, running shift is something you can bring into your home. If what you receive this year from God is simply an instruction to pray or fast throughout the year in your home. As beautiful as that is, a man can do it in the wrong way. And at the end of the day, you won't be able to sustain the same order of results every day. But what God said is that the altar of prayer must be erected. Must be, your prayer altar must be burning throughout this year. You could actually come up with a system. And what is the system? All right. I used to be on night duty. Dear, you are on morning duty. And my chassis is ours. Laro. Then in the night, I will do six hours. Or oh, do one hour, I do one hour. Do one hour, I do one hour. Do one hour. So everybody team up, okay. We are starting from six. So the one who started by six, we know that the next time that he's going to do it is by eight. Because another person, after six o'clock, chanting for one hour, another person, and you might not be together. You, are, you might be in different places. But everybody will just know that. What it come? Maybe to preach. And indeed, a word came that you should keep the altar of prayer burning. You still achieve it. But then not in an exhaustive manner. There is a who only you, uh, both of you can sit down in a place. So the other area will crumble. This is what happens if you don't set goals. You will overemphasize. You will dwell so much on one part or one area of your life and the other one will go down. And this is why it's also, it's, it's, it's also very good that you introduce fasting as you start up with your pursuit of assignment and goal in the year. So by the grace of God, on 15th of this month, we shall be having a fast. A very joyful one. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible said they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. He said they will mount up with what? With wings like eagles. They will do what? And walk. And not faint. That will be your portion this year. In the name of Jesus. Can you write this? Feet? Hmm. You are a 
Yeah. 